What's going on everybody? Today's video, I'm gonna go over my two weeks of caffeine fasting. I'm actually on my second day of zero caffeine, literally cut it out of my life, or I'm planning to cut it out of my life for the next two weeks, cold turkey. Yesterday it was all right, and I have done this a couple times, so I'm, I know what to expect, but yesterday I was super tired, right? And per usual, I would be craving caffeine. And similar to what I'm feeling right now, I feel like I need to get some caffeine in me, but it's just a mindset that I have right now, right? Because right now I'm prepping to go to work out, and usually my pre-workout type of ritual to do is to have some sort of pre-workout, and that entails having some caffeine, whether it is a rock star, an energy drink, a monster, whatever it is, or some sort of powder, it still has caffeine in it, and therefore, it kind of like wakes me up a little bit and makes me alert, keeps me focused during workouts, but right now, I, I'm trying to do this two-week caffeine fast so I could reset my tolerance. That's the whole purpose of it, because I was having trouble not only falling asleep, I was having trouble staying awake throughout the day without like copious amounts of caffeine. And I'm talking about like 300, 400, 500, 600, and even up to like 700 to 800 milligrams of caffeine. And it, it is recommended by the USDA that you're not really supposed to exceed over like 450 milligrams, but that is based on your tolerance because caffeine is a drug in itself. Even though caffeine is a drug, it's relatively safe for many people to consume. That's why caffeine is actually called the most consumed drug in the world. Every single person practically has a taste of caffeine before, whether it is from Coca-Cola, whether it's from coffee, energy drinks, anything, you name it, most things have caffeine in it. With that being said, it is relatively hard to take out caffeine from your life. So we have to take into consideration things like soda, right? So I am a fan of sugar-free diet sodas. And every time I buy some diet soda, I have to make sure and check there is no caffeine in the ingredients. And for this example, so right here are the ingredients to this specific soda, and it doesn't seem like there is any caffeine. It's, this is just something that you have to take into consideration whenever you're doing a caffeine fast completely. And besides sodas, which is a very common drink nowadays, teas, teas have caffeine in it. Every single drink basically has caffeine in it nowadays. You just have to double check, make sure the ingredients will tell you if that drink has any caffeine. So that's how I avoid it. I obviously avoid energy drinks. I avoid pre-workout products and stuff like that. So I double and triple check so I know that my two weeks of consecutive days of fasting, so literally 14 days of no caffeine, is set and ready to go. And this is relatively tough. I am on my second day and I really feel like I need to drink some caffeine so I could be more alert, be more cognizant, but you know, it's just breaking that mental barrier that most people have whenever they are trying to quit something. What up? It is day five of me, no caffeine. Today has been a struggle. Yesterday was okay, day four was okay, but today was a little bit of a struggle. I have really, really realized that food, whenever I eat something, especially my first meal, which I try to have around, I'm usually hungry around like 10 o'clock-ish, for nine to 10, it makes me super, super sleepy. I don't know what it is, it is probably insulin. Um, I'm not an expert in these type of hormones and stuff like that, but regardless, it is every time I eat something as my first meal, it makes me super sleepy within the hour of me finishing the meal. Regardless, today has been a little bit of a struggle, but A-OK, -okay, as long as we keep busy, keep productive, it is good. As I go to the gym, since I'm still going to the gym, I recently did a deload. And what that really means is that I cut my training volume by half. So let's say I do four sets of 10 for like 70 reps on the bench press, uh, in terms of dumbbells, that's 
actually my weight, I would do like two sets of 10 instead of four sets of 10. So then I cut my volume by half. And the whole concept behind this is so I could recover, actively recover while still being in the gym, you know, pushing the same weights. I'm keeping my body, maintaining my strength and being used to the weight. I just reduce the volume so I don't like, because whenever you work out, you technically like damage your body and you're hoping it recovers so it could be better and stronger. I am cutting the volume just so I could have that mental and also neurological type of reaction and um, keeping used to the weight. So that being said, I did that for a week actually. I did that last week before I started my caffeine fast, but I was still in the middle of it when I first started and now I'm back in my regular volume and it, it has not really been a struggle, uh, but I still feel a difference. I'm not as amped up. I'm not as focused as I was whenever I was in caffeine, but that also comes with the perk where I am falling asleep a lot faster. I feel like my quality of sleep has increased because of my caffeine intake has significantly reduced, like literally zero. So that's just the pro and con of it. And that is just the hurdles that someone will have to go through whenever they are going on a caffeine fast. With that being said, um, as you can see in the background right here, it is my desk, right? It is my desk setup. Throughout this week, it has been a little bit of a struggle to get work done at home, mainly because I tend to start yawning at like 9 p.m. And I used to not do that with whenever I was taking caffeine. And uh, it, it just screws up a little bit of my productivity because I'm tired and I know I'm tired. And there is like a certain point where there's this 30 minute window, I realize this, a 30 minute window where I would just continuously yawn and it is legitimately continuous. Like each and every like five seconds I will yawn and this happens for like a 30 minute time span. And after that, after I get through that hurdle of like tiredness or fatigue, I am back to normal and I could focus a little bit better. That is just the main thing that I have experienced so far the past week of, or the past five days, I should say, of me just being off caffeine. It, it is, there is a difference whenever you are cognitively trying to perform and you might be thinking like, why the heck am I like wearing this like a gangster? It's because I live downstairs in a basement and it gets a little bit cold, even though it's like maybe 80 degrees upstairs. <laughs> right now it's like maybe like 68, 67 degrees. So there's a significant difference. So that's why I'm dressed like as a gang gangbanger or something. But regardless, I am still trying to fight off cravings because of that fatigue and because of that cognitive enhancement performance type of thing with caffeine. So that's just the mental craving that I have. And every time I, I feel tired, I crave caffeine, but it doesn't really last long because as long as I keep on focusing on my task, it works out. All right, it is actually day nine right now. I have completed over a week of zero caffeine. To be honest, I'm, I'm feeling pretty great. After the first four days, five days, it went very smooth sailing. Even though I was tired throughout the day, which is normal for like fatigue, I still was able to be productive. I was not as tired as I was before when I was like on day like two, three. So there was like a hump essentially of me going about my day and having, getting used to that fatigue, that normal day-to-day -day fatigue. And the, it feels good. Like after a week, I would say, this is where it's the easiest part because you are already used to it and your energy levels are pretty good and they have, you have adapted to all that, you know, caffeine out of your system. So next week is going to be still, you know, a little bit of struggle, the usual day-to-day -day struggle with fatigue and tiredness but it is what it is sometimes, you know? Aside from all that, I realized food is a very big contributor with my fatigue and feeling tiredness. Every time I've eaten something that's extremely big in terms of my meal, I get really, really tired, especially if it's super sugary or super um, high in carbs. It tends to make me feel sleepy, and I've mentioned this previously. It is really just 
I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I don't, I shouldn't even be eating. <laughs> that's that's the point where I'm trying to get across. Like I started fasting a little bit more, and I try to do it a little bit longer in the morning, so I could have my energy levels up in the morning and be as productive as possible in the morning. Once lunch hits, I'm very hungry, and so I would eat a semi big meal, and of course within an hour or two, I start getting sluggish and all this other stuff that I just, I just feel like taking a nap sometimes after eating a meal. When you are in work, you don't have that luxury of taking a nap. Even during the weekends, this weekend, I have been out and about doing stuff. I have prolonged my meals. If I do eat something in the morning, I eat a very, very small amount. I would say less than 600 calories for that first meal in the morning. And then I go about my day and I try not to eat until like 3 or 4 p.m. It is kind of counterintuitive with my fitness goals because you are really just supposed to eat like every four or five hours. And with me prolonging my meal and especially me working out and then basically working out on an empty stomach, I need to eat something right afterwards because I, I won't be able to fit all of my food in one meal. So that's the main reason why. With that being said, I'm gonna produce another video for this following week where I will comprise of like the last week of my fast and and actually go a little bit into deeper realms of why you should be doing this and why I think most people will find it super beneficial in terms of everything that I have experienced the past week or is going to be two weeks. And I think one of the biggest things that I will touch on is just the mental clarity that I have. I talk a little bit more about what I emotionally and mentally felt. And this is driven through um, a little bit of clarity in my, in my side where I felt like caffeine was inducing or at least promoting some sort of, um, I wouldn't say depression, but some sort of like irritability. So, and that's also shown in a lot of the research that's done, but I'll touch in that in the next video, but thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. See you later, dude. My head's so messed up, but I can't fold in no fear Got sight set right up on these bands, and I'm gonna use the wipe tears Five years to stick into the plans I made when I was a jit Told moms I can't go live no normal life, won't stop till I'm rich Said where were you when I was down bad, and the money coming to me so fast Left the whole shit